Reb Chaim Vital says an unbelievable thing. Reb Chaim Vital says that we all know we, we call someone someone a Baal Midos. Does someone have Midos Tevis? That means does he have good character traits? Does he, is he a Baal Midos? Does he have good Midos? So Reb Chaim Vital says that the way a person is judged by Hashem if he has midos toivos, if he has good midos, is the way the husband acts to the wife and the way the wife acts to the husband. Which can mean that somebody, let's take for example the midah of chesed. Someone can be a bal chesed and do a, a lot of chesed outside the house, but inside the house, between the husband and the wife, he doesn't do chesed. So of course he will get schar, he will get reward. Hashem rewards for everything that somebody does. Of course, Hashem will give him reward for all the chesed that he does. But he, was not, he is not considered what we call in Shamayim. Hashem does not consider him to be a Baal chesed. A Baal chesed, someone who has the character trait of doing chesed. How does Hashem, how do you, how does Hashem evaluate that? Hashem evaluates that between a husband and a wife. How the spouse treats, how they treat each other. If they treat each other with chesed, are they, treating, are they treating each other not with chesed? That is how Hashem evaluates if they are considered a Baal chesed. So what I would like to do tonight is, I would like to take the midah of chesed. We all know chesed means kindness. And in order to understand it, when we say that the main way that we consider chesed is that Hashem looks at it, the way between a husband and a wife and a wife and a husband. So first we have to understand what is the mitzvah of chesed. After we understand what the mitzvah of chesed is, then we can apply it and say, let's see what chesed is between a husband and wife. But before we apply what chesed is between a husband and wife, first we have to understand what is the mitzvah of chesed. So first I want to start like this. What is the makar in the Torah? What is the source in the Torah of the mitzvah of gemilas chesedim? When you do a chesed, when you do a kindness for someone, which mitzvah have you fulfilled? Which, where, which pasuk in the Torah does it say that you should do the mitzvah of chesed? So the Rambam in Perak Yudalad and Hilchas Avil explains very clearly that the mitzvah in the Torah of chesed, the makar, the source, is the words of the ahafta l'reyacha kamoicha. You should love your neighbor, love your friend like yourself. And the Rambam goes on to explain that the mitzvah of the Yahafta Lareacha Kamaicha, a lot of people have a misconception about this mitzvah. They think that it's only a mitzvah in the heart. The Ahafta, you should love your friend, your neighbor like yourself. The Rambam says, no. The Ahafta Lareacha Kamaicha is a mitzvah of action. A mitzvah of action. What does that mean? And the Rambam explains as follows. In Perut Yudalit and Hilchas Avil, he explains as follows. The taich, the translation, the way we taich, Rahafta Recha Kamaicha is, is from the Gemara, is whatever you would like your Reyacha, your friend, should do to you in action, that's what you should do back to your friend. In other words, means you should love your friend like yourself. Whatever you enjoy and you desire and you like that your friend should do to you, that's what you should do back to your friend. And the Rambam goes on to explain that, for example, Bikr Chaylim, visiting sick people, if someone is Rahman al Islam, God forbid if someone is sick in the hospital, he would want that someone should come visit him. Therefore, the mitzvah of Yahav Tlarecha Kamecha is that. Since if you would be in that situation, you would want someone to visit you, so therefore, you should, when someone else is in that situation, whatever you would want someone to do to you, you should do back to your friend. The same thing when someone makes a chasana. If you make a chasana, you want people to come and join in the simchas chasan v'kala. You want people to join in the chasana. That's what you would want for you. So therefore, when your friend makes a chasana, to join in the simchas chasan v'kala, Whatever you would like someone to do for you when you would be in that situation, whatever you do back to your friend, you fulfill 
the mitzvah of Yehafta Lerecha Kamoicha, which is the mitzvah of Gemilas Chasadim. That's how the Rambam explains the mitzvah of Gemilas Chasadim, a mitzvah of action. Okay, now I want to drop two shakers here tonight. And the first shaker is, I want to tell you over a Pele Yoyetz. A Pele Yoyetz that is incredible. Incredible? The Pele Yoyetz says as follows. The Pele Yoyetz, if you want to look it up, it's Ois Ches on Chesed. He says as follows, the Pele Yoyetz. He says, I have a Tema. A Tema means a wondrous question. I have a wondrous question on people. He said it comes before Rosh Hashanah, before Yom Kippur, people are looking for schutim, for schusim, for merits. They want schusim. So he says, what do they do? He says, a person will go to do psichas ha-heichol bezmanim ha That means, right, to be able to open the Oren Kodesh. Let's say, psicha by ni'ila in Yom Kippur. People will pay, he says, a lot of money to be able to do psicha by ni'ila on Yom Kippur. It's a very, very big schut. A very big schus, people will pay a lot of money for it. He says, let's say, to be the sandik by a bris milah. He said, sandik by a bris milah? If a person would have a choice, they will pay a tremendous amount of money to have the schus, to have the merit, to be a sandik by a bris milah. Says the Peleyoyetz. Listen to this. Says the Peleyoyetz. To go ahead and give somebody change of a coin. Change of a coin. Not lending. Lending is a different mitzvah. Not, you're not lending any money. Someone is standing by a coffee machine or by a soda machine in our day and age and it's flashing correct change only. And the person is stuck. He only has a dollar. So you change the coin. You change. You go ahead and you change his dollar into coins. Zok de Peleyoyat to change a coin for someone is greater than doing psicha by neila. It's greater than being sadik by a bris milah. He says, why? He said, doing psicha by neila is not a mitzvah in the Torah. It's, it's a very tremendous thing. It's a very big school. It's a very nice minig. But it's not a mitzvah, a, a mitzvah that Hashem commanded us in the Torah in action to do. To be a sadik by a bris milah is not a mitzvah in the Torah to be a sandik by a bris. He says, the mitzvah of Gemilas Chasadim is, if you would be standing by a coffee machine, if you would be standing by a soda machine, and you're thirsty, you want to buy a soda, and you don't have change, you would want someone to change it for you if you were stuck. You would want someone to change it for you. So if you find your friend in that same situation, like the Rambam explains, whatever you would want your friend to do for you when you're in this situ that situation, to do, to do back for your friend is a mitzvah in the Torah. So he says to change a coin is greater than doing psicha banila on Yom, Kippur, on Yom Kippurim. It's greater than being sandik by a bris milah because it's a mitzvah in the Torah. An unbelievable Peleoyetz. Unbelievable. So let's just, for a second, let's just, for a second, come back. We started off. We started off saying that Reb Chaim Vital says that the way Hashem considers somebody, if they are a Baal Chesed or not a Baal Chesed, is not how they are out of the house. It's how they act in the house. It's how they act to their spouse. How the husband acts to the wife and how the wife acts to the husband. That is how Hashem, that's how Hashem measures if the person is considered a Baal Chesed. So according to the Pele Yoyetz, if somebody goes and takes out the garbage for his wife, a wife goes ahead and serves supper to her husband, and maybe she may have a difficult day and it's very hard, but she takes out that time and effort, and she goes ahead and she serves him supper, and she cooks a meal for him. And the husband is very busy and he helps and says, you know, I want to watch the kids, you go rest. These, this is a mitzvah in the Torah of Gemilas Chasodim that the Peleoyetz is saying is greater than doing psicha by Ni'il on Yim Kippur, greater than being sonic by a bris milah. Because anything that you would want someone to do to help you out, that you take that action and you do it to your friend to help him out, 
that is the mitzvah in the Torah of Gemilas Chasadim. So of course it's true even not by your spouse. Even outside the house that's true. But again, what's the ultimate way that Hashem considers someone to be a Baal Chesed? The ultimate way that Hashem considers someone to be a Baal Chesed, someone of those kindness, is if he does it with his spouse. Now, Rabbi Sai, I want to just tell you, this right now, what I've told you now, is the introduction to my speech. What do I mean it's the introduction? And I'll explain to you. I'm going to drop now, I said I'm going to drop two shacks. The first shack was the Peleoids. Now I'm going to tell you another shack. And I've said this Rambam over on different occasions, and I've gotten phone calls. They want to know where this Rambam is. So I'm saving everyone a phone call. It's in Hilchas Deis, Perik Vav, Halacha Gim. The Rambam says as follows. The Rambam says, what's the ultimate way? What's the highest form of fulfilling the mitzvah in the Torah of Yahafta L'Reyacha Kamoicha? Which we said again, the Rambam explains, what's the mitzvah of Yahafta L'Reyacha Kamoicha? Not just a mitzvah in the heart, it's a mitzvah of action. It's a mitzvah of whatever you would like someone to do to you, to do to somebody else. Now listen to this Rambam. The Rambam says that the ultimate way to fulfill the mitzvah in the Torah of doing chesed is l'saper b'shvachoy shel chaveroy to compliment your friend. Now let's digest this Rambam. There's two points that I want to take apart from this Rambam. The first thing is just an an incredible, an incredible shock what the Rambam is telling us. Someone tells his wife, supper was delicious. He has fulfilled the mitzvah and the Torah of Gemilas Chasadim, greater than Psicha by Neila, greater than being Sandik by a bris. For complimenting his wife, the wife compliments the husband, you're a very good husband, you're a very good father, you're a very... It's a mitzvah in the Torah. Now again, the Rambam is not discussing between a husband and a wife and a wife and a husband. The Rambam is discussing stamazoi. He's talking about even out of the house. He's talking about between any two people, any time you compliment someone, you fulfill the mitzvah and the Torah of Gemilas Chasod. Now, what's the reason to, that you fulfill the mitzvah of Chesed for giving a compliment? The answer is very simple. The reason why, we're soon going to go into why is that the highest form of Chesed. That needs an explanation. That's what we're going to get to very shortly. But why it's a mitzvah in the Torah of Gemilas Chasadim to give someone a compliment is very posh. It's very understandable. Because again, we explain that the Rambam says, how do you fulfill the mitzvah in the Torah of Gemilas Chasadim? The mitzvah is v'ahav t'lerecha k'moicha, which is a mitzvah of action. Whatever you would like your friend to do to you, you do to somebody else. Everyone loves when someone compliments them. Since you love when someone compliments you, when you compliment back your friend, you are doing the mitzvah in the Torah of Yahav to L'Reach HaKamoicha. Whatever you would like your friend to do to you, you should do back to your friend. Since you would like your friend to give you a compliment, therefore it's a mitzvah in the Torah to give your friend a compliment. So we have here an unbelievable thing. You go into shul, you tell the Balkaire, you lane very nicely. You tell the chazin, you daven very nicely. Mitzvah in the Torah. Mitzvah in the Torah, Gemilas Chasadim. Again, a person, a person tells his wife, you keep the house so nice, you take such good care of the kids. Mitzvah in the Torah, Mitzvah in the Torah of Gemilas Chasadim. A Mitzvah in the Torah, no different than taking Dalad Minim on Sukkot. A Mitzvah in the Torah of Gemilas Chasadim. So that's very understandable. Why it's like that. But the question begs for itself. Why does the Rambam say that the ultimate form of Gemilas Chasadim the highest form of doing chesed is to give someone a compliment. Why is that the highest form? We explained the Peleyoyet said, every little thing that you do for someone, anything that you do for somebody, anything that you help, you give somebody a ride, you lend someone a car. In fact, I'll, I'll share with you a very interesting little story that somebody, this, ha this story happened, someone who heard this Peleyoyet, he heard this Peleyoyet, and he was so taken by this Peleoyetz that it's greater than being sandic by a bris to go ahead and give someone change. Somebody asked him, if, somebody asked this person if he could borrow his car. So his first thing was he doesn't like to lend out his car. He didn't want to lend it out. Then he thought and he said like this, let's say the person would ask me, 
can you lend me your car? If you lend me your car, I'll make you sandik for my son's bris tomorrow. So, oh, that would be a great deal. I would jump at that. I think almost anyone would jump at that. He said, well, now that I hear from the Peleyoyets, that even to give change of a coin is greater than being sandik by a bris because it's a mitzvah in the Torah. So to lend the car itself, that's the mitzvah in the Torah of Chesed that's greater than being sandik by a bris. And he lent him the car. In other words, we have to take, you take this, you take this Rambam and Peleyoyets, and you take it and you apply it into action. That any, any type of favor, or any type of kindness that you do to someone, is the mitzvah in the Torah of Chesed. So now, we're coming back to this Rambam, to this incredible Rambam, that the Rambam says that, again, the highest form of doing Chesed is to give your friend a compliment to tell your friend something good about himself. So we said we understand why that's a mitzvah of Haftal Recha Kamecha. Since you like someone to compliment you, that's why it's a mitzvah to compliment your friend back. But why is that the highest form of Gemilas Chasal? So I want to share with you, there's a letter, there's, I don't know if everyone here is aware of it, there's there's, a, there's a, a thing of letters the, sti the stipler Goin used to write, the Balkil is Yankov, it's called Kraina de Igrisa. These are, it's, it's put together all letters, a few different volumes that he used to answer to people. And it's known that top, top psychologists cannot get over. The stipler never went to school for this. They, they can't get over. There's, a, there's like some very, very big from psychologists who wrote a whole safer taking some of the Stipler's letters about how he gets to the depth of a problem and he hits the nail on the head, B'shut HaTorah, Mekoyach HaTorah, how he was able to really get to the point of a problem. There's a letter in Kreine de Igrisa that goes as follows. They wrote the Stipler a letter. There's somebody who's a tremendous Talmud Chacham. A tremendous Talmud Chacham. A very, very big scholar. And he fell into a tremendous depression. So much that he just, feels, he just feels nothing. He feels no taste in life anymore. His wife wants to get divorced, and he's falling apart. Doesn't wanna, he doesn't want to learn anymore. He doesn't, he, he's just falling apart. So the stip, they want to know, what should they do? So the stipler answers him and says, if a big Talmud Chacham falls into a depression, we have to assume that the reason is, he doesn't know this Talmud Chacham, this Taipler. He's writing like this. We have to assume that you know what the reason is? That he's not getting enough kavod. He's not getting enough respect and appreciation like he feels he deserves. And this Taipler writes in parentheses. It's very possible that this Talmud Chacham himself is not even aware of why that this is the reason he's in the depression. But I'm telling you, that's the reason. And we're soon going to see rise to the stipler. The stipler is saying that if a big Talmud Chacham fell into a depression, it's because he's missing, he's feeling that he's not being enough appreciated. And since he's not being enough appreciated, because of that, because of that, he fell into, he fell into a depression. So the stipler says, therefore, you should try to give him kavod. People should come to listen, ask him to say shiurim for them, and try to give him, to show him that they feel appreciation for him. Now, Ramosha Shapiro from Yerushalayim says over that he heard from Remchetzkel Sarna, B'Shem, the altar from Slabotka. The altar from Slabotka. Rav Nosson Tzvi Finkel, famous, the head of, from Slabotka. And Nosson Tzvi Finkel said as follows. He said, if a person would feel about himself that he has zero self-worth, he's worthless, he's not worth anything. You know what the Haldim Slabotka said would happen to that person? His neshama would go out of his goofy, he would drop dead. If a person would feel he's totally worthless, he would have zero self-esteem and feel he's worth nothing, he wouldn't be able to live. Now, this point that the stipler is saying, and the Alt of Slabotka is saying, that if a person feels zero appreciation from anyone, zero covet from anyone, he, he feels no taste in life, 
is a Mefurisha Gemara. It's a Mefurisha Gemara. You could look it up. It's Tainus, Mesechta Tainus, Chav Gimel, Amr Aleph, all the way at the bottom of the Amr. So without going into a whole Arichos, there's a famous, famous story over there about Chaini Hamagel. Everyone knows Chaini Hamagel was the one who would, who, would, who would dive in for rain, he would make a circle around himself and rain would come. Uh, we're not going into the whole, the whole thing about Chaini Hamagel now. So it says over there, the Chaini Hamagel, a whole story, he fell asleep for 70 years. If the 70 years, if the 70 years he woke up and he came into his house, and it says he was able to figure out that he was asleep for 70 years because of a boxer tree, a whole story there. That's not, we don't have to go into all the details. And he came into his house, and he said, is Chaini Amagel's son still alive? They said, no, his grandson's alive. He said, okay, I'm Chaini Amagel. And nobody believed him. His family didn't believe him. Next from that, he went into the base Medrash. He went into the base Medrash. And he heard the people in the basement they're saying, wow, today we have answers on all our questions. Everything's unbelievable. It's like in the days when Chaini Amagel used to be alive. He used to make everything so clear. Chaini Amagel heard this. He said, I'm Chaini Amagel. And they looked at him. He hasn't been around for 70 years. And they didn't believe him. They didn't believe he was Chaini Amagel. Now listen to this scary Gemara. The Gemara says they didn't give him Yakara Kidami Boile. Yakara means kavod. They didn't give him the respect that he needed. So what did he do? He davened to Hashem that he wants to die, and he died. The Ben Yoyod explains that after he died, then Hashem sent Eliranovi to tell them that really he was Chani Amagel, whatever. But at that point, they didn't know he was Chani Amagel. He davened Hashem to die, and he died. And the Gemara says, Oh my Rava, on this we say, Oy Chavrusa, Oy Misusa. What does that mean? It does not mean a Chavrusa in learning. It means either a companionship or death. So I'm, I'm, I urge everyone, after the year is over, to look up this Rashi inside. It's Chav Gimel Amad Aleph and Tainis, it's the second to last Rashi on the Amid. Rashi says an incredible thing. Rashi says, you know what that means? Either companionship or death. What does it mean companionship or death? He says, if someone doesn't get respect from his friends, kavod, that's what Rashi's lotion is. If someone doesn't get kavod, respect and appreciation from his friends like he's used to getting, he would rather die. So here we have that what the stipler is saying, that the reason why this person fell into this deep depression was why? Why did he fall into this deep depression? Because he feels that people are not giving him kavod. Who is greater than you would say? But he's a big Talmud Chacham. He should be interested in kavod. He should be interested in appreciation. We see who is greater than Chayni Amagel. The, the holy, holy Tana, Chayni Amagel. Who whenever he dived into Hashem for rain was always answered. Chayni Amagel daven to Hashem that without the respect that was due to him, that he didn't feel any appreciation and kavod, he, he prayed to Hashem that Hashem should take his life. And Rashi says, Ay Chavrus Ay Misusa, again, I urge everyone to look up this Rashi. It's Chav Gimel, Amal Aleph, and Tainus, the second to last Rashi on the page. Rashi says that if a person doesn't get respect, from his friends, like he's used to getting, he would rather die. It's noyach misa. it's better for him to die. He can't live without that respect. So now we understand what the Taifler was saying, that this Talmud Chacham, if he doesn't feel he's getting respect and appreciation that he deserves, he Pasha feels, he fell into a depression. He can't, he can't, he Pasha can't live. Now we understand what the Alta from Slabotka is saying. That the Alta from Slabotka is saying that a, a person's neshama can stay if he feels no self-worth about himself, he Pasha can't live. Now we can, um, let's go back to the Rambam. The Rambam said that what is the greatest way 
and the ultimate way to fulfill the mitzvah of Yahafta Lareacha Kamaicha, which is to do chesed. What's the ultimate way? What did the Rambam say? To compliment your friend and to make him feel good. Because the answer now stares us in the face. The answer to our question is that the, since the mitzvah of Yahafta Lareacha Kamaicha, the Rambam explains is whatever you would like your friend to do to you, you should do to your friend. What is the greatest desire that a person wants his friend should do to him? What do you see from this Gemara in Tainus? What is the greatest thing that a person, when it says, Oy oy misusa, either companionship or death. Rashi doesn't say companionship, to play games with him, to play board games with him, to have companionship to schmooze. Rashi says companionship to give him the respect and the appreciation that he's used to getting. That is, the, that is the lifeline of a person. So it comes out, since the mitzvah of chesed is to do to someone whatever you would like someone to do to you, and the greatest want and the greatest need that a person has for himself is that other chaverim should show him kavod, should show him respect, should show him appreciation. Therefore, that is the ultimate way and the top level way to fulfill the mitzvah of Yahatul Recha Kamaicha of Gemilas Chasadim. Because since the mitzvah of Gemilas Chasadim is that whatever you want someone to do to you, you should do to somebody else. And the greatest thing that a person wants and needs that someone should do to him is to, to give him the appreciation and to give him the covet that, that, that to, and to give him covet. Therefore, that is the ultimate way to fulfill the mitzvah of Gemilus Chasadim. The ultimate way is to be mechabit someone, to give someone kavod and appreciation by complimenting him and saying good things about him. So now, let's go back. We, well, the reason why I said before in the beginning, that when I said over the Peleoyets, and I said this is an introduction to the speech, because we have here now, let's, let's analyze very closely. If it says, Oy chavrusa, oy misusa. Either a companionship that gives me covid or death. Who is a person's closest companion in life? Yes. Who? Oh. The spouse. The spouse. So we have here a black and white Gemara that is saying, either my spouse gives me covid, appreciation and respect, or I'd rather die. So we have here in the first Gemara, what is the key to Shalom Bayis? We have here a black and white Gemara in Rashi, in Tainus, Chav Gimel Amad Aleph. And I urge everyone ag again to look it up inside. Chav Gimel Amad Aleph, the second to last Rashi on the page. That since Oy Chav Rusa, Oy Misusa, a person needs to have a friend to give him kavod, respect and appreciation. So therefore, the key to Shalom bias between a husband and a wife, of course we said before you do chesed, when you take out the garbage for them, you help with the kids, you serve supper, you do laundry, that's all true. But what's the ultimate oy chavrusa oy misusa? It doesn't say a chavrusa to help serve me meals, or a friend to play games with me, or a friend to go on outings with me, a friend to show me appreciation and respect. In other words, the ultimate way, the ultimate way of doing chesed comes out is that a person, or let's take a husband, shows his wife, I consider you a great wife, I consider you a great mother, I consider you a great person. A wife considers her husband, I consider you to be a very good person, I consider you a good husband, I consider you a good father. Feeling that appreciation and respect, that is the ultimate in Gemilas Chasod. So let's go over again. We started off the speech with Reb Chaim Vital. That Reb Chaim Vital says that the way Hashem evaluates someone if they are considered to be a Baal Chesed. The way Hashem evaluates is not the Chesed you do out of the home, it's the Chesed you do in the home. Even though of course you will get schar, you will get reward for doing Chesed out of the home also of course. But the way Hashem evaluates if you are a Baal Chesed is the way you do Chesed in the house. And so we explained 
we started off saying from the Peleoids, every small chesed that you do, it, that you do in helping in the house, that is of course the mitzvah and the Torah of chesed. But now that we've explained that the ultimate way of being fulfilling chesed is to give anyone a compliment, to give anyone kavod. Let's go without, for a second without the spouse. Anyone in shul, the chazan, the valkyrie, you never know who's down. To give anyone kavod, to give anyone respect. You fulfilling, the Rambam is not talking about a spouse. The Rambam is talking about any person that you give him kavod, you fulfill the mitzvah in the Torah of Vahavta Larecha Kamoicha, Gemilus Chasadim. But now that we are explaining that Reb Chaim Vital says that the, the ultimate way that Hashem considers you to be a Baal Chesed is not if you do Chesed out of the house, it's if you do Chesed in the house. And what's the ultimate way to do Chesed? The Rambam says, is to be mechab with someone and compliment someone. Comes out that the greatest Baal Chesed in the world is someone who compliments his wife and a wife who compliments her husband. That's, that this is, we built up here, one plus one plus one plus one. Again, that Reb Chaim Vital says, the ultimate Baal Chesed is someone who does Chesed in his house. And the Rambam says that the ultimate Chesed is to compliment someone. So let's put the two together, one plus one equals two. If the ultimate Baal Chesed is someone who does Chesed in his house, and the ultimate Chesed is to compliment someone, so the ultimate Baal Chesed that exists is someone who compliments and is mechabed and shows appreciation to his spouse. We have here, so I once heard there's somebody in Yerushalayim who's very, very, very big in Shalom Bayes. They say that he's done thousands of cases. And he said, I once heard a speech from him, I was very excited that he said this thing. He said, the key to Shalom Bayes, by he holds from all his cases that he's seen, is one word. Compliments. He didn't say over the Rambam, but it's the Rambam. He was mechavin to the Rambam. The key to Shalom Bayez, he said, is compliments, showing appreciation. Now, a person may say, someone may say, this sounds like a very nice speech, but what should I do? I see a lot of negative traits in my spouse. And since I see a lot of negative traits, it's very hard for me to show them the appreciation and the kavod and the respect, because I, I, I don't really feel they deserve it. You know who asked this question? The Baal Shem Tev. The Baal Shem Tov asks this question, not on a spouse. Baal Shem Tov asks it on the Pusik. You should love your neighbor and your friend like yourself. It doesn't say it has to be a tzaddik. You have to love. It goes on every yid. So the Baal Shem Tov asks, a person could say, how could I love him like myself? I, I could see all these, good, all these not good things that he does. I, I, I notice them. I see them. How can, how can I love him like myself? So Baal Shem Tov said a very beautiful and simple answer. He said, what does the Pasuk say? Love your friend like yourself. Do you have negative traits? Does that stop you from loving yourself? Do the negative traits you see in yourself, do you know anybody whose negative traits that he sees in himself stop him from trying to get himself good things? Stop him from loving himself? So he said, love your friend like yourself. The same way you love yourself with your faults, and you try to do good things for yourself with your faults, love your friend and your neighbor despite his faults, just like yourself. Do good things to him despite his faults. That's what the Torah says, Kamoicha, like yourself. Like yourself, nobody's perfect. That means, for example, you can have someone who's not, he's not a Rosh Hashiva, he's not sitting in Kailo, and he doesn't even have time to learn every night, and he pushes himself, and he goes out and he learns once a week. His wife should make him feel like a million dollars. His wife should show him, not, not start looking well, I really wish he would learn five times a week, and I really feel maybe that he doesn't do enough. You should show appreciation for what he does do. Give him kavod for what he does do. A husband that comes home, of course no one's perfect, but a husband should whatever, whatever a wife does, a hus the, the, it's impossible, it's impossible that a wife doesn't do many good things for a husband. Even if there are certain things that bother someone, there are many good things that they do. A husband has to always say, I appreciate how you take good care of the kids. The wife has to believe that he considers her to be a great wife and a great mother. 
If not, it's oy chavruso, oy misuso. Like Rashi says again in Tainus. If you don't feel, if the, if the person doesn't feel they're getting from their friend, and again, the spouse is the real friend, they don't feel they're getting the covered appreciation that they deserve, then they would rather die. There's no, there's no, there's no time in life. I'd like to share with you a story. I heard this story from Magoyin HaTzadik, Rabbi Yaakov Meir Shechter, from Yerushalayim, Big Mekobol, Big Tzadik. I heard this from him on a recording once. He said that there was in, in Tel Aviv, this goes back many, many years ago, in Tel Aviv, and at that time, he says everyone was becoming, even people that came religious, I don't know everything, he said people, they, they were all becoming not religious in this like whole, all those areas. There was one person there who brought up a beautiful, beautiful family. He had a large family and every son was a ben Torah, every daughter was a basis, a real basis, Israel, Kshera, everyone, it was like unbelievable family. And when he was in his older years, somebody asked him, what was your trick? What was, what was the formula? How, how did you produce such kids at a time when all their friends were, were, were going off the derech, they weren't keeping tired, they weren't keeping Shabbos? Somehow, what, what was your trick? He says, I want to tell you something. When I was a young boy, I was a young boy in the 1930s, I learned in Yeshivas Baranovich. That's where Rebbe Chanan Vassiman, Zechayin Levracha, his yeshiva. I was 13 years old. You had, had very young teenage boys used to learn by him. And at that time, I don't know if everyone here is aware, it, it knows the name, there's some Ramosha Bloy. Ramosha Bloy from Yerushalayim, he was the head of Agudas Yisrael in Eretz Yisrael. Like Gavin, I, there was a head of Agudas Yisrael in America, there was a head of Agudas Yisrael in Europe, there was a head of, of the Agudas Yisrael organization in Eretz Yisrael, it was Ramosha Bloy. It was a very, very, it's a big time with very shrewd man, very smart man, and he was in charge of a good Israel in Eretz Israel. And he came to visit Europe. He had to meet with, diff with different Gedalei with different Gedalei Israel. They had to arrange different matters. So he came to visit, and they needed somebody to take him around. They had to take trains from one city to another city in those times. They needed someone to show him around. So this Bakr said. This, older, this person said, I was a bacher of 13 years old. Now he was an older man. He said, I was a 13-year-old bacher. I got the job. They took me and they said, you go around with Ramosh Bloy and you should go around with him and show him wherever he has to go. So he said, that's what I did. I was his mishamish. I was his attendant and I went around with him. We went from place to place. And then he said, one time Ramosh Bloy had a big problem. What was his problem? His problem was that he, had, he, he doesn't say on, in the story, he doesn't say what the matter was, but he had a matter at hand that he had to make a decision to do one way or the other way. If he does one way, he's going to insult these people. If he does the other way, he's going to insult those people. And he didn't know what to do. So, so this person said, Ramosh Bloy was very deep in thought. He didn't know what to do. It, was like, it felt like it was a no-win situation. Someone's, he's going to hurt somebody over here. So he took this bacher, this 13-year-old boy, and he said, you know, there's an empty shul over here. Come with me into the shul. They walked into the shul. It's quiet. Nobody was there. It was empty. They sat down. Ramosha Bloy turns to this boy and says, I have a big, big problem on my hands here. I don't know how to solve the problem. I've got, to know, I've, got, I've got to know you now over the last little bit of time you're with me. I see you're a very smart boy. You have your shamayim. You're a pekech, means to say you understand matters. You understand things very well. I want to be shoyal eitz by you. I want to ask you for advice, what I should do. So this person said, I looked at Rabbi Moshe Bloy. The G'dayla Yisrael used to come ask eitz to Rabbi Moshe Bloy. He's a 13-year-old boy. And Rabbi Moshe Bloy is coming to ask him an eitz? Ask him for advice? He, he, was like, uh, he told Rabbi Moshe Bloy, I, I, I don't know, I'm a little boy. I, what, what do you ask? So Moshe Bloy said, no, you're a smart boy. You're going to grow up to be a chashev at Hamot Chacham. I could tell. I see it in you. I see it in you. I see it. And you're very smart. And you understand things. You're always going to do the right thing. I see it in you. And I trust your Eitzah. And I want to follow your advice. 
the person said, my whole life, that respect that Ramoy Shabloy gave me, kept me in line. My entire life I walked around, Ramoy Shabloy holds for me, how could I not be a real, uh, a real uh, Yerush Mayan? He came to ask me an Eitzah, to ask me for advice when I was 13 years old. I, I better live up to what he, what, what he, what he told me I'm going to become, what he thought of me, that respect that he gave me, that kavod that he gave me, I have to live up to it. He says, I lived my whole life, whatever my, brought up my children, living in these difficult times, he said, it's all in the, because the schos or Ramosha Bloy gave me that respect and that kavod. We see what positive kavod can do. Now, really, I should finish this speech now, because uh, my grandfather is Rechaim Levracha. His name was Ramosha David Mukovsky. Some people called him Mr. Morris Mukovsky. He once told me, when you say a speech, drive home one point, and that's it. Because everyone should walk away with one point and what they're going to do. So what I'm going to do now is, really we've driven home the one point. And the one point is to give compliments and show appreciation to your spouse. That is the ultimate form of chesed. But we're keeping everything now has been on a positive note. So really, it's not a second point. It's really part of this point. But I just want a little bit, just a little bit, just touch on. Everyone can think by themselves. What's the flip side of the coin? If the ultimate in chesed is to make someone feel good, if the ultimate in chesed is to give someone the respect, the respect that they need. So what's the flip side? What's the worst way? What's the worst thing you can do that's the opposite of chesed? The worst thing that you can do is to take away someone's cover, to say hurtful comments, to take away their respect. That is the, wor that is the opposite. The, that is the opposite of the ultimate chesed. I don't want to go on for so long, but just somebody wants to ask the Chazanish. I don't want to, I don't want to go through a whole, a whole it's, a, it's a lumdish thing, I don't want to go through the whole thing, but to make it short, somebody wants to ask the Chazanish. If somebody comes over to me, this is what the person asked, it's printed in my ish. If someone comes over to me and says, can you do me a favor? Can you drive me somewhere? Can you take me somewhere? So he asked the Chazanish as follows. If I do that, I fulfill a mitzvah der of chesed. Of course. Do I have to do it? You hear the question. Do I have to? Do I have to do it? It's a mitzvah of chesed. It's a mitzvah of after recha kamaycha. It's a mitzvah of chesed. And it's a mitzvah chiyuvit. Chiyuvit means you have to. That's the mitzvah. It's, a, it's not a mitzvah. There's something called a mitzvah chiyuvit and a mitzvah kiyumit. Chiyuvit means, chiyuvit means that you have to do something. Like for example, let's say it comes the first night of Pesach. You have to eat matzah the first night of Pesach. The Vilma Goyen says the rest of Pesach, you don't have to eat matzah. If you do, you will get a mitzvah every time you eat, but you don't have to. You don't have to. The first night is a mitzvah chiyuvit, you have to. The first night, right, for example, the first night of sukkah is a, for, for, a, for a man, it's a mitzvah in the Torah, he has to eat in the sukkah. He has to. The rest of sukkah, if he doesn't want to eat, he doesn't have to eat in the sukkah. But, the, but there's something called chiyuvit. So listen to what the Chatanish said. The Chatanish said that there's a Gemara in Shabbos, Taflamid, very famous Gemara, that someone came to Hillel, and he asked Hillel, he said, I want to become a Ger, he was a guy. if you teach me the whole Torah on one foot. Very famous Gemara. So Hillel and Gemara Shabbos, Taflamid. So Hillel answered him, Whatever you don't want someone to do to you, don't do to someone else. Rashi says, Hillel meant the mitzvah of the Yahafta l'reacha kamaycha. So the Masha asks, why did Hillel say it the opposite way? Hillel said it in the negative. The mitzvah of the Yahafta l'reacha kamaycha, we said always is, whatever you want someone to do to you, you should do to someone else. Why did Hillel tell him, whatever you don't want someone to do to you, don't do to someone else? Why did he say it in the negative, not in the positive? So the Chazanish told this person, this is the answer. The answer is that you know when 
you transgress you know what the chiyuvis is? to hurt someone's feelings the only time you transgress that you are what you call you get an avera is if you, if you go ahead and you hurt you do something to someone that you would not want someone to do to you so again the Chazanish explained there's two parts to the mitzvah of there's the kiyumis part and the chiyuvis part. Kiyumis means that you don't have to do favors for people. You don't have to. If you do it, you will fulfill the mitzvah in the Torah of chesed. But you don't have to do it. But the chiyuvis part is that you're not allowed to hurt someone. You're not allowed to hurt someone. Besides the Isra of Eino Astvarim. He says, that's what Hillel was saying. That don't do to someone what you don't want someone to do to you. Because that's the chiyuvit part. tell you a story. This story I heard from a relative of mine. The story happened with him himself. He had a friend in his class, and the friend in his class was, was around, I think, in eighth grade. And the boy was, he was not at risk mamish. He was close to being at risk. And he was very, he was in a very delicate situation. And one day, my relative told me that he met this boy. And the boy said, he's finished, he's not going back to yeshiva. That's it. He decided right now he's finished with yeshiva. So what happened? What happened? He knew, like, he, knew he, wasn't, he wasn't holding there. What, what, what happened? He said, I'll tell you what happened. He said, there were a few boys in the class having a conversation. And about, I don't know about what. And each one was saying their opinion. I feel like this, I feel like that. And I said my opinion. And they turned to me and they said, who are you? What's your opinion worth? He said, if I have no respect in yeshiva, I'm finished. This boy became a machal Shabbos, Rahman al He ended up being Chayzer B'tshuva, he came back. But Rahman al he, he, he went, through, went through a lot. What do you see? The flip side of the coin. Giving, giving the respect kept that person going his whole life. Like we said that story from Ramay Shabloi in Tel Aviv, where people were becoming non-religious. It kept him going his whole life. But the opposite can be true also. Hurtful comments and showing not respect takes away and destroys a person. It destroys a person and makes a person feel like, I can't, if, if I don't have respect here, I don't belong here. So I just want to, we'll, we'll just summarize, when we're basically finished now, I just want to make a quick summary outside. The quick summary is as follows. We started off from Reb Chaim Vital. That Reb Chaim Vital said, that the way Hashem judges somebody, if he's considered a Balmidois or not, if he's considered a Bal Chesed, someone who does kindness or not, is not the way he does it outside the house, it's the way he does it inside the house. That's how Hashem evaluates if the person is a Bal Chesed or not. Okay? That's, it does not mean to say, of course, make that clear, made that clear in the beginning, of course you will get schar, you will get reward for doing any Chesed out of the house also. But to be considered a Baal Chesed, someone who is, has that meat of Chesed, Hashem, that character trait of Chesed, Hashem evaluates it based on how he acts between his spouse, the husband to the wife, and the wife to the husband. And we explained, first from the Peliyoyets, that any little thing that you do is a mitzvah of Chesed. Any little thing. And we said over that unbelievable Peliyoyets, that, that changing even a coin for someone is greater than Psicha by Neila. Greater than being a sonic by a bris mila, which means to say that serving supper, doing laundry, changing diapers, helping people, helping a husband, helping a wife, wife helping a husband, all these little things are something you would want someone to do to you. It's all the mitzvah in the Torah of chesed. But then we went further and we explained that what's the ultimate chesed? The ultimate chesed, the Rambam says, is to compliment someone, to give someone respect, to, give so, to, to show someone appreciation. And we explained that that's Mafurish in the Gemara, that the Gemara, the Gemara says that since they didn't give enough kavod to Chayni Amagal, he said, Oy Chavrusa, Oy Misusa, either a companion that Rashi says, a, 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 a Chavr, a friend that gives me the kavod that I need, the appreciation, the respect that I need. That's of not, he'd rather die. So therefore we said, 
Number one, what, who, what is the, who is the main friend of a man? Who is the main friend of a lady? It's their spouse. And therefore, since that's their main friend, it's oichavus, oichavus, either they feel that the, the wife either feels that the husband thinks that she's a very good person and, the, and, and a good mother and a good wife, and, and the same thing vice versa, that the, the, that the husband feels that he's considered a good husband, he's considered, and we explain from the Baal Shem Tov that even if there's ne negative traits, there's always something good, there's always something good to show kavod for. There's always something good to show appreciation for. It's impossible that there's not. And, and, we, and, and we, we, just, we just ended off and we said, we said that one plus one equals two. Let's just remember this, let's end with that, to remember this point to take home. That one plus one equals two. If Reb Chaim Vital says that the greatest way of being, of the, the way Hashem considers someone to be a Baal Chesed is if he does Chesed in his house. And the Rambam says that the greatest way to do Chesed is to give compliments. Comes out that everyone should remember that the greatest way to do the mitzvah of chesed is to compliment and make your spouse feel good and we should all be zeichet to do that and we should all be zeichet to have beautiful shalom bias.